Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! This morning, Paul Nuttall unveiled UKIP's general election manifesto in Westminster. It comes as some low-key campaigning by other parties restarted. It stopped after Monday evening's attack. So what have we learned? Well, Paul Nuttall has pledged to tackle radical Islam. He said anybody who left the UK to fight for so-called Islamic State should forfeit their passport and never be allowed to return. The manifesto promises 20,000 extra police officers, 20,000 extra troops, 7,000 extra prison officers, and 4,000 extra border guards. UKIP would reduce net migration to zero within five years, <clears throat> and they would ban the wearing of face coverings in public places. UKIP are offering an extra £11 billion every year for the NHS and social care by 2022, and that would be funded largely by cuts in foreign aid. There would be a rise in the threshold for paying income tax to £13,500. That's over a thousand more than the direction it's currently going in. And UKIP promises a cut in taxes for middle earners, as well as a cut in VAT on household bills. UKIP's manifesto promises to axe tuition fees, but not for every degree, but especially for science, technology, engineering, maths and medicines, the STEM skills. And there's a pledge to provide up to 100,000 new homes for younger people every year. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> On pensions, UKIP would maintain the triple lock, which sees them rise uh, by the higher of prices, average earnings, or 2.5%. Now, launching the manifesto, UKIP leader Paul Nato described the decision to launch it as a message to terrorists that they will not win. It is the duty of democratic politics to confront the most serious issues of our time. And a general election campaign is the most appropriate moment for those issues to be debated. It is also our chance to send a message to those who hate our way of life, our values and our democracy. The message is clear. You will not win. Expressing sympathy with those killed and maimed in Manchester is important, but it is not enough to light candles or signal our upset on social media. When you are a leader of a political party, you have a duty to set out how you would protect the people of your country from the threat to their entire way of life. And taking questions from journalists at the end of the launch, the BBC's political editor, Laura Kunzberg, was loudly heckled after suggesting to Paul Nuttall that he was trying to blame the Prime Minister for the bomb attack in Manchester. It sounds like you're <coughs> near as damn it blaming the Prime Minister for this attack and the circumstances that led to it. Is that the BBC? Is that the BBC? Please, 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 let's be respectful. Um, no, I'm not accusing the Prime Minister. I'm, I'm saying that politicians in this country have been weak on this issue uh, for many, many years. Um, in terms of their record as Home Secretary, I think it's appalling. Uh, this is a Home Secretary who cut the numbers of police officers, cut the number of border guards, cut the number of prison officers. I'm sorry, it, is a, it isn't a good record at all. But as for blaming her personally for the attack, absolutely not. I'm not doing that. What I am saying is that the politicians in this country are too cowardly at the moment to actually face up to what the real issue is. And UKIP's Deputy Chairman, Suzanne Evans, joins us now. Now, I understand at that press launch, press launch, you said that the Prime Minister quote, must bear some responsibility for what happened in Manchester. What do you no, mean by I that? Think so. I, I made it perfectly clear at the press conference that the only people to blame for the tragic events on Monday night were the terrorists who plotted 
and carried out this atrocity. And I, I want to make that absolutely clear. So when you clear. say that Mrs May must bear some responsibility, then what do you mean? To what are you referring? I think that we have had successive Labour and Conservative governments who have failed to put the security of our nation and the safety of the British people first. And I think that is the first job of any government. We spelled it out at our press conference. We want to put another 20,000 police back on our streets because that is almost about the number that have been cut over the past few years. We want to put 4,000 more border guards because that again is a number that's been cut over the past few years. We're an island. We should have a natural ability to be able to protect ourselves. And yet our borders have been deliberately opened, not least of all by John Prescott's government as well in 1997, where there was a deliberate attempt to go out and invite people to Britain whose way of life was actually fundamentally incompatible with but, ours. But the suicide so what we're bomber. Saying is, the, that, but, is that the cowardless of previous politicians, I'm afraid, has controlled contributed to an environment where this kind of ideology has been allowed to, to, to flourish. But the suicide bomber, Abedi, was born in this country. He what was? Be, what, what yeah. does Absolutely. being an and island, what was... being an island, what's that got to do okay. with it? There's two separate issues to this, and again, we made this clear this morning. Immigration, I mean, his, his parents were not born here, and it's pretty clear now, I think, that his, his parents were, were people who perhaps helped to radicalise him as well. It sounds as though they had even a part to play in this attack. Which, well, we don't know. To, to try we we it, haven't got the that, evidence for that yet. You know, there's, there's no doubt that, as I said, there, there are people who have migrated to Britain in the past 40 years or so who have never even tried to adapt to our way of life. There has been this philosophy of multiculturalism, and I mean a philosophy of multiculturalism, I'm not talking about multi-ethnicity, which nobody has any problem with. This philosophy of multiculturalism, where people have been allowed to come and live in Britain, and they are allowed to carry on behaving in exactly the same way as they would in their countries of origin. This is why we now have record numbers of young girls and women in this country living at risk of female genital mutilation in this country, in Britain. It's why we have honour crimes, it's, it's why we, we have, even, even from, from, from the African practice of breast ironing, these appalling cultural practices and cowardly politicians have not stood against them hard enough. But for a long while this suicide bomber behaved like a normal British kid. He followed Manchester United, he played cricket, he got to Salford University. Uh, something obviously changed, I understand that. But I don't see what that's got to do with the number of police on the streets or having tougher borders uh, or so on. These things are very complicated. We don't quite understand how this radicalisation could could take place. But to say that all the politicians have to have some responsibility for this just seems to me to be spraying around blame. I think what we have to do is we have to tackle not just the violent crimes when they occur, we have to tackle the ideology behind this as well. And unfortunately our politicians have, rather than tackle the ideology, they have in many ways actually massaged it. So for instance, Theresa May herself has spoken about how uh, she has no problem with Sharia councils operating in Britain. She said she has no problem problem with the niqab or the burqa, which for me are unequivocal symptoms of the oppression of women that she of all people should be standing against. Now, I understand this is not a simple issue. I'm not going to say UKIP's manifesto is going to solve all these problems, but Andrew, for God's sake, we have children dying. What are we supposed to do? We cannot just carry on as normal. We have to try a new approach because the current approach is simply not What's, working. What is the connection between wearing the niqab and what happened in Manchester on Monday night? There is a connection because we have allowed these radical, extreme ideologies a place in our society. They have, in a sense, become legitimized by, you know, where it's somebody, I'm not saying that every Muslim woman wearing a veil is, of course, going to commit an atrocity. No, I know well, women, I know women who, have, who have worn it, a veil. It wasn't a woman wearing a niqab that. that committed the atrocity. It wasn't. But my point fact, is, I'm not aware. we need to make a stand of against this. these practices in Britain that are just not compatible with our values. And as I say, you know, you might not like the answers that we give, but I think in politics we have a duty to at least try and make a difference. And the fact is, the status quo is simply not Well, working. let's just uh, hear again what you did have to say at the UKIP uh, manifesto launch this morning. Let's hear it. I, I think she must bear some responsibility. All politicians who voted against measures uh, or voted for measures to make cuts bear some responsibility. As I said, Adam, you know, I think when 9-11 happened, we should have had a, a serious rethink about immigration. It didn't happen. Again, you link this to immigration, but it's hard to see the evidence. And, and can I point out that the, the, the parents 
of the suicide bomber uh, came to this country because they were opposed to Gaddafi, which was also British policy at the time to be opposed to Gaddafi. They, they were welcomed into this country at the time because they were seen to be on the same song sheet as well, British uh, policy. Andrew, so you, what, don't, you don't need to talk to me about that. I, so I was, what, I was what's the problem? I was a journalist when uh, I, I remember some uh, Kurdish refugees from Iraq came into this country seeking asylum and they were sent back home because the government said, oh, Saddam Hussein's a nice bloke, he's not gassing the Kurds. That turned out to be complete... You know, politicians, yeah. foreign policy but does change. And this is the point. Nobody ever seems to be able to stand up against evil wherever they see it. Well, how can they you base an immigration mind? policy on this couple coming in? At the time, they had no children. And they come uh, to Britain. They are fleeing Gaddafi at the time. How can you Who base an immigration policy? We're not going to let you in because your kid might turn out to be a suicide bomber. How is that a rational basis for proceeding? Well, funnily enough, those words are not in our manifesto, Andrew. My point. But you're is the one linking what happened in Manchester to immigration. I'm linking. No, no. Actually, actually, that's not what we're doing. Actually, we are talking separately about a having a sensible immigration policy, a policy that says there are too many people coming into Britain and too many. You could just not linked there. immigration to the prime minister's responsibility to no, what actually, happened. That clip, that clip was actually we were talking there about the cuts that she'd made to the border force, to the police force, to our armed services. But you then the people cuts. just heard what you said. You went on to link it to immigration. Well, immigration has been a problem as well. Yeah, and as I, I stand by what I said. After 9-11, we should have thought, my goodness, we've got this massive problem with Islamist terror in this country. Maybe we should just stop letting people who share these ideals from coming in. And that's what our manifesto says today. Is it? Say zero net migration over a period of five years. Is it? And to have a compatibility test so that people coming in, we can test their social values. And if they're incompatible with Britain, why should we let them in? Is there not something quite desperate about UKIP now? You've been marginalised in this election. You've crashed in the polls. Your vote's going back to the Tories. You're no longer a threat to Labour in the north and you've now decided to make immigration and what happened in Manchester, your kind no. of last last ditch stand. Okay, and well, it's a, and it's unsavory. It's not unsavory. And I tell you, it's also not true what you're saying. Nigel Farage was talking about these issues at, at our very height in 2014. You probably criticised him then as well for talking about it, saying it was unsavory. The fact is, UKIP has been talking about these issues for at least the last three years. This manifesto and our integration ideas and our policies were launched last month. This manifesto was put to bed before the Manchester Act. So don't you dare accuse us of trying to be opportunist here. We are trying to respond to a serious issue in this country that, frankly, the other politicians, they don't even speak its name. They can't even bring themselves to say the words Islamist terrorism. And that's, that's pretty unsavoury too. Let's look just at this one-in-one-out immigration policy. Because mm -hmm. your policy will now be that no, man, no matter how many doctors we need in the NHS, no, many, no matter how many high-tech uh, skilled people we need for all of the growing high-tech hubs across this country, we can't have any unless someone leaves the country. OK, you're, you're rather missing the point, is that we're also saying in our manifesto that we're abolishing tuition fees for students of science, technology, engineering, yeah. medicine and maths because we need to start training up our own people. Right. But that'll take years. What do we do now? We're Absolutely. short of doctors now. We're short of high-tech specialists now. But you will not allow them to come in unless somebody leaves. Well, I mean, it's a bizarre... A suggestion. It doesn't work like that, Andrew. It, this is why I made it clear your introduction was wrong. We're not going to take migration to zero for five years. We're going to have a target of zero net migration over a five-year period. Well, that's the so same in that thing. Period, in that, no, it's not. In that period where we're training up our own people, we can still have up to 300,000 migrants a year coming to Britain. I don't think anybody uh, would, would think that that was an unreasonable But after number. five and years, it, the net migration will be zero and, under your plan, correct? It's still 300,000 people coming in. It's well, it's 248,000, 248, the latest like figure. It. Your net migration figure will be zero un, under uh, your and plan. Will be, and it will be bear no relationship to the economic needs of this country. Of course it will. Of course it will. Because well, then you can't have it at zero. Yes, we can, because we prioritise in those 250, 300,000 people who are coming in, we prioritise the skills that we need. That's why we've also said we're going to have a moratorium on unskilled labour for five years. We see absolutely no logic in having... Uh, up to a million young, nearly a million young people unemployed in our country who can do the jobs that at the moment big businesses are cynically exploiting migrants from 
overseas to do. Instead of giving jobs to British people and paying them a decent living wage, they're importing in cheap labour from overseas. What's the unemployment rate in Britain that's now? got to stop. What's I'm the, not sure what the current figures, I'll be honest. 4.7%, it's, 4 .7%. it's yeah. the lowest for I mean, 42 years. The labour market is true. very tight, but a growing economy needs more labour. Uh, and a lot of it needs to be skilled. You, you, look, every politician's ever sat in that chair has promised to do more on skills. By and large, they've nearly all failed. Well, they've and you are now going to create a massive skill shortage in the years to come, it's which totally will undermine the economic growth of this country. All be because your immigration policy says this brain surgeon doctor who wants to come to Britain cannot come in unless I retire abroad. Andrew, I think... I think That's you're, what you're saying. You're, you're very sensible, usually, but I think you're, you're hyping this up into the extreme. Our policies, if you take them as a whole in our manifesto, have... A, we're putting a huge lot of, amount of money into training doctors, nurses, emergency workers, policemen, border force control, prison officers. We are investing in these people. And the great thing about UKIP's policies is, unlike the other politicians who sat in this chair and, uh, and, and have made promises they can't keep, we know where our money is coming from. We have a spending yeah, you're pot gonna of cut, You're going to cut, cut off aid that, to the poorest in the no, world. No, we're not. We are going to keep aid at 2%, 0, 0.2% of GNI, and we'll be paying the same percentage-wise as America and more in cash terms than Spain and Italy That's combined. Military. I would not... I would not be in UKIP and writing that manifesto if I did, if I believed that our party was cutting off aid to the, 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 the neediest in the world. I would not be here. That is John, not what we intend to do. John and Prescott. not only are we going to continue to spend four billion aid on humanitarian relief, we're going to have a hospital ship as well. We've budgeted 500 million for that to increase our capacity to deliver aid around the world. John Prescott, you've been listening. What do you make of it? Well, I welcome debates about anything, and particularly migration is a very important issue. There's no doubt about it. Parties are debating it. The real problem comes into the solutions. When you start setting the targets, you then have to explain why you'll get it down to zero. She can't do it in a few years to get down to something like 100,000. There are very real problems, but some of the facts... You know, police were actually increased under Labour, not reduced. So you can't blame us for that. But they were reduced, and where they were reduced afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder when you said these skilled people, yeah, a brain surgeon. That they were, they we're were not going to stop any brain surgeons no, coming wait to the a minute. country. Do, that's I for just sure. Want to say it's not so much. Would it? What if they came from Libya or Iraq? Would you deny them then because of where they come from? No, when you do as, it? As, as, as or long you would as they let them in, or do you here. find out what their background was? Were their parents actually supporting some radical movement which we were encouraging Britain over in Libya? Is that what you have? To, is that the depth of inquiry you will go into John, to stop people from coming? Just because you're a brain surgeon, you know, we we want. If, OK, I, I think talking about a specific occupation is a, is a little bit uh, tangential, but, you know, we are not going to stop any brain surgeons that we need coming to Britain. Well, take so, a doctor, think, take anything. Don't okay, leave out the brain surgeon. That was the one that was mentioned. Are you going to investigate the background of people who come from countries that you obviously assume to be evil countries, where there are Muslims? Will it's you investigate attitude. that? You've just done it with it's the mother attitude. and father it's of the attitude. person who's been accused of this bombing in Manchester. Would you go into the background to do that then as well? No, we we test attitudes. Um, well, how do you, you do you that? You and I both know, John, that you know you're. What you do you mean? You cannot, a question at the actual you, port of entry? No, a question in advance when you were applying for your visa or, or your work permit. And what sort of questions would you ask We'd them then about questions. their religion? Just back. Would they have to say they're Muslim? Uh, they might well do, but uh, that, that is not to? a problem. You can be you can be Muslim and you can you can support the rights of women. You can support the rights of gay people. Um, but it is about so you would it's ask that kind of attitude. you support gay yeah. people. Is that the sort of question you're going to subject to people who come here to Britain, perhaps to be the brain surgeon well, or what's the doctor? Your, what's your answer, John? You know, under, under your government, there are under the Labour government, you let you you literally went out seeking migrants who whose views were incompatible with the British way of life because you wanted to rub the nose of the right in diversity. No, that no. Well, well, let's just put it. that fact. What it, meant, it, on, it, well, and what it meant, and I supported that, I didn't believe in a federal Europe, which presumably is what you believe in as well. You don't want that Europe structure. And what they were said, what will Eastern European countries do? And there were people like me and others who thought, let's get them into the European community mm -hmm. and then there will be a better political balance between the strength of France and Germany. These are strategic really decisions to make. really worked well, didn't make. that, John? Well, 
if they came over here because we're an economy which can give them jobs. That's right, and taking a, jobs on, from our young for, people. Well, on for 10 years I was a seaman. I tried to get a job on American ships. Why? Because the money was more, more <laughs> than I could get on the British ship. It's kind of a motivation you are faced with. These are normal economic facts. All you want to do is to make it look evil that if you're from certain countries, if you're wearing a burqa or you're an immigrant, you are feeding the fears that are causing the problems in this country today. No, John, There's a connection to Manchester. John, you are Final feeding, word. You are feeding the fears because you, you know, you are not facing up to the reality here of Islamist terror. Well, let the electorate we decide. We have got to do something about All it. All right, we'll leave it there. Uh, Suzanne Evans, on the day you launched your party's manifesto, thank, thank you. you for coming in. I've been getting away.